the science that's available for us, the, the chakra systems, you know, the nerve bundles that are here and present, they're affected by things, um, everything is energetic on an energetic level. You bring in images of uh, um, that soothe you. You bring in, if your puppy, your doggy, your kitty is not well, you bring in images of cats and dogs that are well, and you hold and embody that wellness when you're looking at this image or something that connects you to your own wellness inside, imagining healthier pictures of your dog, healthier pictures of your cat, that will allow their energy field to shift to remember that wellness. And it's sort of funny to say because they're always in the current moment, but we're co-creating reality as we need for it to fit um, our story that we're having. Our animals also have a story, have an experience. They're one with us and they fit in perfectly these soul connections that they chose before they came into physical form to participate with us. And if we're choosing for them to continue on with us, to extend the time period, the time frame out, that's, um, they have absolute choice as we have absolute choice to participate. And that's that energy of creating love an energy of creating flow, an energy of feeling the wellness. We're the human animal, okay? And the human animal is the only animal on the planet that is predominantly, anyone know? Oh. Left-brained, left-brained, analytical brain. Even women who are considered to be, in general, a little more right-brained, of all the animal species, the human species is the only species of animal that is predominantly left-brain. Every other species on the planet, except for a few that are balanced, are predominantly right-brained. So we know the left brain is what? The analytical brain, right? I gotta do this, I'm making lists, I gotta do, 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 think, analyze, figure out, calculate. By the way, is there any skeptics in the room? Anyone? I know there's not because of the way you guys, I usually start that off. But the <laughs> skeptics, here's the problem with the skeptics. We all know skeptics, right? Yeah. Okay, here's the problem with the skeptics. They're only in their left brain. Because the right brain, which is what all the other animals are, that's the knowing brain. It doesn't have to figure it out. The left brain's trying to figure out what the right brain already knows. This is my favorite quote. It's my original quote. I don't know how I got that. Yeah. I say it all the time. Left brain's trying to figure out what the right brain already knows. All the animals are right-brained. So they're feeling, sensing. They're reading the energy. They don't have to figure it out. They don't have to give it labels. That's what the left brain does. So the skeptics of the world are over here. They haven't, they haven't stepped into this right brain awareness. That's why they're skeptics. They're off balance. So beyond the left brain, right brain. By the way, does anyone know the few animals of the world who are balanced between the left and right brain hemisphere? Dolphins. Yes. Dolphins. Dolphins. Whales. Whales. Anyone else? Yes, the, the great apes. The great, the great apes. So Anyone, anyone else? They're dolphins, 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 whales, dolphins. great apes, and, and what other ones? Elephants. Yeah. The big pack, not just elephants, the big pachyderms. Rhinos and hippos. Wow. Amazing, right? They're more balanced. That would actually make them, what, like maybe even more intelligent than us, right? Not really that hard to believe in my opinion. But <laughs> <laughs> I have some really great stories when I was in Africa connecting with those animals. But anyway. Okay, so we know that's part of the science of it. But beyond that, here's what else we know. We have five brain waves. Who knows what they are? Alpha. alpha. What's the alpha? Alert. Light meditation. Gazing at a sunset, chilling out. What are we doing in front of the TV? Alpha. Vegging out. That's alpha. What's the other? I'm going to tell you, by the way, when you're watching TV, what's the job of the alpha brain wave? Nobody knows? Program. Job of the alpha brainwave is to say yes. Yes. That's why it's very important to watch what you're watching on TV. Yeah. Do you have mesophilioma? Yes. <laughs> Do you need to go see your doctor? Yes. yes. Wow. Very important yeah. to watch. There's a reason they call it programming. All right, so that's the alpha. 
What's the other ones? Beta. beta. What's beta? Sleep. Active and alert. Oh, right, right, right. Assuming you guys are all active and alert right now, taking notes or whatever? Beta. Yeah. Okay, what's sleep time? Delta. Delta. And then what are the other two? Anyone know? Theta. Theta. What's theta? Hypnosis. Hypnosis yeah. is a form of theta. Higher. That's right. Theta is the brain wave that animals exist in. It's the zone, right? It's what psychics access. They're accessing a brainwave. It's a brainwave that telepathy happens. So I can read your mind if you let me. Uh, I know boundaries, right? I honor the boundaries. You really don't get to open the stuff until you learn that. You learn what you're allowed to do and what you're not. There's laws. But anyway, that's a theta brainwave. All brainwaves are connected. The animals are in the theta brainwave. It's a brainwave that connects us to universal source. It's a very slow moving brainwave. You're in a very deep meditation and yet you're still awake. You're still completely alert. So hypnosis does happen that. And then what's the final brain wave? Gamma. Gamma, anyone heard of spoon bending? Mm -hmm. yeah. Manipulating things outside of you without actually touching them? It's real, it's a gamma brain wave. Okay, so animals communicate through the theta brain wave. So that's one of the other scientific things. And then there's two other very, actually three other very important parts that the animals are using actively that we're not always. Does anyone know what they are? heart center, oops, heart center. So this, we know there's actually brain matter in the heart. There's literally, your heart has a brain. There's literally brain cells in the heart. So this heart has all kinds of knowing and awareness, but because we're all so busy as a human race up here in the left brain, I gotta do, I gotta do, I gotta do, I gotta do. We're not even opening this up. This is what the shift of consciousness is about. Awakening this heart center, opening it up, being of love, stepping into the all the intelligence, the awareness, the empathy, the, the, the connection here. So animals are, already have that open. They haven't shut it down out of fear. We turn it off from fear, right? So, yes. When you say, do you mean the actual organ of the heart? Yes. When you say brain cells, how is that different than a heart cell? Okay, what scientists have discovered is that there's only brain cells here and there's one other place where brain cells exist, and that's in the heart. Okay. That's at the Institute of Heart Math, by the way. You can do the research, right? So they're studying the heart, the Institute of Heart Math. Now, there's what that means is it's to, um, from your heart is giving instructions to your brain oh, rather than um, a, being a function of what the brain is thinking. The heart actually has an intelligence all its own that's not connected with the brain up here and in fact it informs and creates up here what you experience if your heart is shut down you're not able to see as much your your actual eyesight the sounds different things occur the heart has its own brain intelligence that informs the rest of the body and is actually measurable Talk out yeah <laughs> it's measurable out beyond you um the elect we don't know exactly what sets the SA node. There's a node that conducts electricity to your heart and then that conducts it throughout the rest of your body. And so that's another thing that what makes your heartbeat is still unknown to science. Mm. Cool. Yeah. So then our heart center has the ability to feel. You know when you're in the presence of love, right? You can feel it when you're around someone who's loving, or like that little dog uh, who came in, Joey, running around with all his joy and love to share. That's just, that's just like love, heart center love, right? Mm -hmm. So then the other part, does anyone know what the other part is of the body that's actually physically, scientifically makes this real? The skin. The largest organ of the body is a receptor site. Who's ever had goose, goosebumps? That's when your skin is saying information, significant, relevant, pay attention. Yeah. So we actually, in fact, at the Institute of Heart Math, what they've done is they've taken electrodes, put it on the skin, played music silently that was inaudible, and still all the people could identify the song. So the skin actually hears. So this is the science behind it, because when we receive sensory information, the animals are not shutting this off. They receive it through all of that. And if we start to access it and develop and open our ability, 
which we can when we start really shifting out of that left brain hemisphere, not that we don't use it when we need to, right? Then all of these gifts start to open up. Now one last thing about the science of it and then we'll move on. Who knows all the chakras? What are the major chakras? Yeah. Root, One, two, Root three, right? <laughs> okay, so science may not call them chakras, but absolutely, there's no question that this is an important energy center here and important yeah. things happen here. It controls all these areas of the body. Same here, right? Same here. This is all digest. This is all reproduction. This is all digestion. This is all heart center, chest, breathing, lungs. This is our throat, our thyroid, our our voice box. This is all connected to this chakra. Then this, we've got an important chakra here, third eye, pineal gland, and pituitary gland. Right? Major glands, master glands. What does what spirituals call it? Third eye. Yeah. Right. And up here, crown chakra. And then there's one here, which we call our eighth chakra, right? Connects us to divine, high self. So animals have the same ones we have. They have the same energy centers. And these energy centers in us, they get shut down. We shut them down. They get shut down for all kinds of reasons. Chemicals in the sky, fluoride in the water, artificial foods, sitting in front of a TV, electronics. There's a bazillion reasons they get shut down. We shut them down because we're afraid of our sensory, we block ourselves off. But in any case, animals don't do that because they're not living in fear, right? They don't really have to worry that they're gonna pay the rent. They don't really have to worry about getting along with their mother-in-law. They don't have to worry about like, how they get along with their boss, are they gonna have a job, is they gonna get fired, is the, is the, you know, the world gonna end? They don't think about that. That's not in their reality. Their reality is, how do I give love to my human? How do I help my human? What do I need to do to serve my human? What is my human learning? What's my human going through? What's my human thinking about? Because I can read their thoughts. So this is the science behind it. it makes sense to everybody, right? What's that? The dog reads our thoughts. Oh, they know our, they absolutely know our thoughts. So they don't see in color like we do. They don't think from, they're not analyzing a situation and going, oh, there's a cute guy over there. She's, um, what they sense is, Oh, you're, they have those goosebump sensors and on them alert and active and someone whose energy field chemically is not connected to their field. They can smell it. They can feel it, something that's not wonderful for you. They begin to react long before that person comes into your field. And also just understanding your thoughts are energy. Your yeah. thoughts, our thoughts are creative. So they're reading energy. So they're just aware of that. They're super sensitive to all energy. So they feel what we feel. They sense what we are thinking. They're, they're not yeah. screening it out. And they, you know, since they don't have that overactive left brain, they just pick it all up. And they think, they don't necessarily feel separate from us. So, oh, this is a huge key thing to understand too, is they don't get that they're a separate being. They feel one with us. And when they transition or when they're not in the physical form, they're still, uh, we're still able to access them. They're still able to access us completely. This is like one of those key things to really, really get. Even though you go, like Joey's moving around the room, it's feeling like it's an extension oh. of yourself. <laughs> Hi. Hi. That's a little lover. I'm a lover. 